Down here, Cedar Bayou Flat, Matagorda side, this whole back shoreline here. Of course, you know, we've again been, uh, been in our negative tides here for, for a little bit of time now, pretty consistently. You know, it's just fluctuated back and forth over several weeks. But these last few days, we've, we've been uh, at zero or negative all week long. Uh, again, looks like it's going to continue to be that way, especially on the back side of this full moon. Uh, so it's, that water's really going to push in and push out. But the thing you have to worry about back here on this back shoreline here, of course, get up is where you can get, you know, knee deep water, work the edge, work the grass. We've been working all this here on both sides, you know, the Matagorda side specifically. And then, of course, uh, cross the way over, get the Cedar, Cedar Bayou flat on this side as well. And kind of worked all the edges out there and get up on the flat grass part of it on either all the way down up here to this point. Has been very good to us. Um, and we found assorted trout of all different sizes. Nothing great as far as you know anything over 20 plus, 21 plus. A lot in that 15 to 18 range. Nice redfish, solid redfish in there in that 20 to 22 inch range. Have all been pretty good for us. Uh, scattered out. Uh, you have to work them a little bit, but once you kind of get into them and find them. Uh, then you can just kind of uh, pay attention to what they're really kind of keying on in as far as color goes. So, you know, with water's been kind of off color back in here, which is some of my favorite style to fish that uh, instead of that gin clear stuff, which is, this is okay, but when you get that off color, then you can uh, you can really kind of go to town and work your different baits, the darker sizes and, and flavors of that to uh, see if you can't locate and find your fish in here. Um, majors and minors have played a major role in this past week that's pretty much our bite frame in and around that with that full moon coming and going uh everything that's been on that either moon set or moonrise minor has been very good to us even the midday I, i'm typically not a big fan of fishing the midday on a full moon but we've extended some trips into that time frame and in uh took in it taking advantage of the major and uh they've been pretty productive for us as well so it's been this full moon bite has been very good throughout the, the, the entire 10 days of it. So I uh, would anticipate that trend to continue to a degree. Uh, you just kind of have to fluctuate, see what, what happens with our tides and what's going on. Weather pattern-wise looks pretty good for the upcoming week. So it's always a key thing to, to hang on to and make sure that you're paying attention to because you just don't want to get caught out in a bad situation. Uh, main baits that we've been using has been the down south. And uh, typically I won't throw a bigger bait during a full moon phase, but uh, the five inch version of the down south has been pretty good uh, and primarily in white ice and bone diamond. Of course, in the original size, the big papa, white ice, bone diamond, and the original uh, watermelon red has been good for us as well. Twisted tea, those same same flavors, uh, the, I could say the darker side of it has been pretty good to us. Uh, Copperfield has been pretty good as well. And then of course the mud minnow, in the uh, burner, shad, burner shad size has been very good as well. Uh, those particular flavors and the sizes have all have all produced fish for us this past week. So we've stuck with it and just kind of paid attention to it. Again, of course, you got your uh, Miradine and Miradine XL have been good. Our Soft Dine XL has been good for us. Uh, of course, your Corky Season Fat Boys, two originals, if you want to throw those, those have been okay. I haven't thrown a lot of those this past week. It's been primarily been plastics. Uh, the knock and tail in, in, in greenback and in rogue have been good as well. And then uh, throwing just a little bit of the uh, marker 54. The marker 54 now has a paddle tail that they came out with not too terribly long ago. I think it was around the, the Houston Fishing Show. So if you get an opportunity to fish with some of those or pick some of those up, get you a bag and flavor those. And they've got nice action to those well, especially if you like really throwing a, a really big paddle tail. And then, of course, and in our mirror lure, Little Johns and Provoker have been pretty good as well. So there's been a variety of different baits that we've thrown and had relatively good success with the majority of the baits. There's not anything that's just been not catching a fish. We just kind of stick with some stuff for a little bit and then change up as we kind of carried, carried on as we got into our major or minor during our time frames and really worked that area. Primary structure has been mud and grass. Grass has been the consistent thing no matter what. We found uh, plenty of areas that's got grass patches in it with some uh, mud that's been mixed in there with it. A little bit of hard packed sand, but not much. Uh, some clump shell in that area well, especially if you get up in here in the third chain, you get that same type of scenario and that type of structure that's in and around those areas. So just kind of take your time, 
work those areas really well with the different baits and different things that you've got access to. Again, 16th ounce jig head, so we're just allowing that bait just to kind of glide through it because that's primarily with mid thigh to knee deep water is all we've been in, and that's what the majority of our fish have been coming from. Backside of mud, this whole area back here, you know, you got your little drop edge that's right there on that deeper edge of that has been, of course, with the water temp or water levels being dropped out. This area out here has, has come into play pretty well for us. You know, the little flat areas that are back on the back side of that bar. There's not been a tremendous amount of water in there. It's been practically unfishable on some of these days and some of these areas, unless you just get a large influx of water, maybe late in the day on a, that moon starting to rise, it pulls that water back in for you. But uh, primarily on the edge out here, there's that little gut that runs all the way down here to the tip. And, you know, we've been working that been wading down that edge like that. And of course, get back here in the lake, fishing all this out here has been very good for us. Knee deep to thigh deep in some areas. Scattered trout, scattered redfish, occasional flounder have been the main suspects that we've gotten out of here. All the, all the trout's been in that 14 to 17 range. Redfish have been in 18 to 21 inch range, but still yet yeah, a lot of fun. Lots of fish has been working here, plenty of bait working in here. You just kind of kind of pick your days on what you want to be able to do. May have to drop your boat out there on that bar area to, to walk across to fish back in this area here, but you can locate and find some fish working in these areas. Again, majors and minors have been the key for us. That's the things that we've really kind of focused in and fishing those time frames in and around that. Fishing the structure has been important for us. Have not fished too terribly much out here on the point, especially when the when that tide's really kind of dropped out of here. That that point way out here comes into play for you. Of course, one of the things that's been good fishing that type of drop, and of course on this edge that's out here as well. And that's where your uh, soft dine, soft dine XLs, those suspended baits like that, your corkies have come into play. The double D in some of those areas as well have been pretty good. But again, the main baits, you know, down south, knock and tails, uh, 54, uh, all those baits as well. Same flavors, what I just mentioned in the last video, is, is the same thing that's been working pretty well off of these edges. So if you kind of want to get into that edge there when you got a deeper drop on that lower tide like that, tying a, tying a, a soft dine or XL. And just and work the edge. Once you come across a little patch of fish, whatever, just kind of hunker down right there and then work them, see if you can pull out some better fish. And that's kind of been our pattern. That's our kind of been our game plan. If nothing's kind of transformed for us up in the knee deep and thigh deep stuff, then we've kind of went away from that and got off those deeper edges like that. Of course, you know, our water temps have been very good. Uh, it's been in the mid 60s, which is super comfortable. Uh, don't have to layer too terribly much up on our, our wading gear. And of course, fish have been pretty. Pretty active, pretty feisty for that most part, and so is a bait. So and that's kind of gone a long way for, especially in and around this particular full moon. That has not been always been the case in, in full moons past, but on this particular one, it's been very productive for us throughout the whole ten, ten day cycle. Uh, we're fixing to get into those transition days, so that's where you just kind of have to kind of back up a little bit and just kind of uh, gauge your plan and see what's going on. We'll see what the fish you can. You have a great starting spot. To see what's happening with them and see what you can do with those and, and, and working the, the supermodels all the way down to the burner shad size and uh, see what your fish, how they react to stuff like that. So again, you know, the structure again, been in the grass and mud, a little bit of shell here and there, but then of course we've been working the deeper edges on the uh, on those super low tides that we've had. So we've been in those negative tides. So it really kind of plays into that for us. Fish sometimes will concentrate in those areas. That's why you have to have multiple locations where you can try to find and locate fish in those conditions. Up here in Mission Bay, you know, the edges out here on either side of the mouth, they op give you opportunity. You got shell that's around that. Of course, when you come inside here, you've got nice little shell beds and pads that are all around here. You've got some good mud. Get on this right side though, you got some areas you have to kind of be aware of. I've talked about this in the past. You got some nice, deep, mushy mud that's, that's next to impossible to uh, wade. If you're going to get there, just kind of work your shoreline edge and just kind of work your way out if you want to fish that particular area. Of course, on the other side, you know, on the west side of Mission Bay, you got it's better weightable areas over there. It's more consistent as far as the, bo the bottom is. Of course, we know we've had super low tides, so some of these reefs out here have kind of revealed themselves and you kind of fish around those weight around those and we've caught some decent fish around and caught some trout around it primarily not too many redfish or flounder or anything else but primarily just trout again all in that about 14 to 17 maybe a few 18s here or there have done pretty good for us we get on the back shoreline by the mission river where it dumps in there that back shoreline there's good get on the other side of the river 
and fish that edge all the way back around to Mission Lake. That whole shoreline, as you get around toward the mouth of Mission Lake, you can get in Mission Lake, but you'd have, again, that's one, another one of those tide predicated areas that you have to make sure that you're aware of because it can get really skinny back in that lake pretty to, to a point. If it's super low, there won't be hardly any water back there, and therefore unfishable. So uh, always pay attention what that, especially right now, with the such fluctuation we have in our tides that you uh, just kind of time that right when you get in there or get to those areas. Say we've had uh, really good success around the shoreline edges, back shoreline, all the way over here to this west shoreline, this edge over here, just fishing structure, taking our time, fishing, you know, throwing our different baits. We've talked about the down south from the supermodel all the way down to the burner shad size. I think one particular flavor that has stuck out better back in here that more than anything has been uh, Copperfield and Plum. Haven't thrown a tremendous amount of Plum flavor this year in any any particular thing, but uh, had one of those and put it on, and, and it was pretty pretty productive for us. So between the Copperfield and the Plum flavor, especially in that off-colored water, a little dirtier water, in Mission Bay can get like that. So. Uh, if anything along that same line, you know, Texas roach, darker flavors, uh, watermelon red, of course, in the uh, knock and tail, the, the greenback, uh, even the key, or uh, not the key lime, but the uh, honeydew melon for the knock and tail hasn't been bad. It's been pretty good as well. Of course, the rogue has been consistent for us throughout. doesn't matter if it's been last spring till this spring. It's been, it's been very consistent for over a year now. It's a great color. If you don't have those, you need to pick some up to get in your bag and or put it in your, your arsenal as you work some of this area. You can get back in here where all the mangrove edges are and fish all this in here. Picked up various fish, different sizes. Of course, there's been little lulls here there where you don't find any fish at all, and you just kind of move on until you locate them again. But again, majors and minors, been the key. Continue to press that. Make sure that you're incorporating that in your fishing day. If you do not, you're doing yourself a disservice. So if you don't know it, learn it. It's a great tool to have. A lot of people... Don't think a whole lot about it, but when you're throwing artificials, you want every option or available to you that can make you help you be productive. And those bite frames have been super productive for us. We've caught the majority of our fish in and around those time frames. So kind of line your fishing day up with when that's going on or when that's going to happen for you. If you can incorporate at least one into your fishing day, then you're doing well. Fortunate enough to get two, that's even better. So anyway, uh, you know, like I say, the Mark 54 down south, uh, the uh, knock and tail, all your uh, soft dines and mirror dines and var various flavors, whatever you'd like to throw. Even if you have the customs, that was good as well. Cut the corkies, devil, all that stuff is, has worked. Every bit of it has worked. Just a matter of what you want to throw and how you want to approach a particular area uh, in and around these time, again, these time frames. And just, again, key things, locate your bait, understand what the structure is there. Uh, pay attention when that major and minor is going to take place. You'll find and locate you some fish and you'll have some quality days on the water.